So it all started, as many things do, on a typical Friday night. It was, I was in my bed watching some YouTube videos, and all of a sudden, this video came up in my recommendations, introducing me to a whole new world of quantum computing. I still remember, the video was called Quantum Computing Explained, and after I watched it, there was so much more that I wanted to know. So I fell down the quantum rabbit hole that night, and every night after that for quite a while. Quantum really piqued my interest. It sounded like something out of a Marvel movie and had the potential to change the world. Obviously, I was interested in it. And that's how my journey began. I had no coding experience. I just finished basic algebra in school, and I had never stepped foot in a physics classroom. But I wanted to learn this new thing, quantum computing. So I scoured the internet and had some long nights in there. I taught myself Python, linear algebra, and even a little bit of physics. And every little tidbit that I learned just made me fall more in love with quantum. And I began to seek advice from professionals in the space as well. And one day I was on a call with this accomplished quantum researcher and she said, Anisha, let me give you some advice. And she lowered her voice and said, you're not going to be able to do much in quantum computing until after grad school. You're going to need a PhD in math or physics. And I wasn't sure what to make of this advice at the time, but I asked myself, is she right? Am I able to even learn anything about quantum computing right now? Or am I just wasting my time? And it took me a while, but eventually it, I realized that she wasn't completely right. And she wasn't the only person thinking this either. There was a huge preconception that graduate degrees in mathematics, physics, or computer science are necessary to even get started in the with the technology. Even high school students think this, meaning they limit themselves and never even try to approach quantum. And I realized that when they're not completely right. Take my own story, for example. I was just 14 years old at the time, and I had no idea what anything about quantum is, but I was already beginning to make an impact. I obviously didn't understand the subject to its fullest extent, but I was able to code an algorithm to detect Parkinson's disease and publish articles on the subject. And this realization gave me the confidence that I needed to continue my quantum journey. But I realized the stigma had greater implications than just my journey. There was a significant lack of resources for high schoolers trying to learn about quantum. Since many professionals didn't think that high schoolers could learn it, they, there was very little content aimed for our consumption. For example, when I began exploring quantum, it took tons of effort for me to scroll through the internet and break down resources that weren't really for high schoolers as much as they were for college students or even grown adults. Courses would say there are no prerequisites and then go on to talk about the mathematics behind Schrodinger's equation. If you Google high quantum computing for high school students, you'll see search results with 200 page long PDFs on the subject. There wasn't a central easy way for a high schooler to learn about quantum. And that's obviously not to suggest that learning quantum computing is easy by any means, but there was still a lot of work that could be done to make the resources more accessible. And this lack of accessibility ends up being a lot worse than people in the quantum space even realize. When we look at the issues that people are trying to tackle in the field right now, things like qubit quality, decoherence, and qubit control, no one is focusing on the people. We call it the people problem. If we don't get the next generation's smartest minds to work on these issues like decoherence and qubit quality, we won't be able to truly make progress in quantum computing. Introducing the subject to people halfway through their undergraduate programs is, in a lot of cases, too late. They already have their lives and careers planned out, and many won't all of a sudden change their plans and suddenly attend grad school for quantum computing. This is why we see that globally there's only around 16,000 physicists, many of these not even in quantum mechanics, whereas for something like AI, which is quite frequently mentioned among youth, there's around 300,000 people working on it globally. So I wanted to do something about this. I wanted to solve the hidden problem in quantum computing that nobody was talking about, the people problem. And that's when I started Community. Community is an organization that overcomes the quantum stigma. It allows other students like me to learn quantum computing and connect with students around the world trying to do the same. 
We started into November of 2019 with mere workshops. And after receiving a flood of positive emails, we wanted to go bigger and bigger. Because now that we saw how desperately people were waiting for something like this to come around, we couldn't stop here. Since then, we've hosted a quantum summer camp for over 50 students worldwide. We've hosted a dozen workshops and post tutorials and original content on our website, specifically aimed for students to consume. We have a few thousand members from over 26 different countries, all united by the fact that they're young and interested in quantum. But the real kicker is the team behind it all. Our entire team is high school students. We are students teaching students. We understand the subject in a way that we can explain it to others just like ourselves. This is Melody. She joined our team when she knew almost nothing about quantum, but had a strong desire to learn about it. And now she's not only learning the technology, but she's creating videos to share it with other people like herself. This is Allison Chavani. They joined our team a few months ago, and now they're helping plan and run a tech conference called Community Vision with dozens of speakers in quantum computing and emerging technology where hundreds of students around the world can unite and learn. And these are just three of the amazing women in quantum, just 15 and 16 years old, already making an impact in the field that we all fell in love with. And it's not just them. There's thousands more on the community team and around the world who are waiting to discover and meet a community of people just like them. And at Community, we're striving to impact all of them with our content, our events, but most importantly, our message that anyone, anywhere should have the tools to learn quantum computing. And this message is what motivates me. Community isn't an easy journey by any means. For the entire team, we're hopping from Zoom school to work meetings and coordinating schedules of 15 teammates across four different time zones. Why do we do it? All of us could have just made our impact by writing quantum solutions and creating them to world problems. For myself, I continue to want to make a meaningful impact using quantum technology. But I believe that one of my biggest contributions would be enabling others to do the same as myself. It's the multiplier effect. My impact is even bigger when I give someone else the tools to make their own impact. And this ties in to the most common question that people ask me, which is, what's next for you? And the answer is quite simple. I want to impact billions, change the world. And it might sound like a 15-year-old's naive dream, but that's okay. I want to solve world problems using cutting-edge technology and enable others to do the same. I'm super excited to build the future. And for anyone who might still be skeptical of what high schoolers can do, I'd ask you to take a long, hard look at community, all of the high school students in it and on the team, and ask you, do we still need a graduate's degree to begin making an impact? Thank you. Awesome. So, super excited to be here today, and I hope you enjoyed that. I'm open to any questions, and if you want the mic, go for it, request it. Awesome. Yeah, for anyone who has any questions, just you can type it in the chat or even request the mic, and I'll just like approve the request. Cool, so I see some mic requests. Here we go. Hi. Oh, that, um, I have a question, how can um, we- call... One second, it seems that you, I can't hear you. Great, can you hear me right now? Yes. Oh, sorry, maybe you were, can you hear me? We're good, go for it. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for your talk, and I'm very excited to hear about your journey. I was wondering how can we help you? I mean, I'm not a higher school student, I have a PhD, but I was wondering if there is somehow that we can help you guys with your group. Yeah, of course. And super, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, community, we are a nonprofit organization, so all of our resources are free, and that goes back into our message, right, that anyone, anywhere should have the tools to access quantum computing, so we never want to make money a barrier, but that obviously, like, affects us for creating free content, so if anyone is open to making donations to our organization, helping us run in that way, 
We also would love to talk to researchers to either host workshops or help us in our content creation because we love creating the content ourselves, just high schoolers teaching high school students. We feel like talking to our peers is one of the best ways to learn, but obviously a lot of us haven't don't have a PhD, so talking to people who do is very beneficial for us. Okay, great. And uh, do, could you please share your contact information or... Yeah, I mean, I think so you can reach me at my personal website is www.anishamessi.com and you can go on there and I have contact information on there. You can also email me at anisha at community.tech. Okay, great. Thank you so much and best of luck. Thank you so much. Accepted another micro request. Hello, Anisha. Hi. Me okay? Yep, I can Hi. hear you. This is Megan Susan C. I'm a software engineer with Swan Consulting in Detroit, Michigan. Um, so, what is the most common uh, demotivator for you and among the high school students that you know that might come from your peers or from people in the industry? And um, how did you build your support network? And who are those people so that we can look for those people when we are uh, building the community here? Yeah, for sure. So I feel when I was talking to people about quantum computing in the beginning, a lot of people thought I was crazy. And that's kind of why community started. But a lot of people didn't. And those are the kids who are really interested in learning things that are different. Right. Because I personally, when I learned quantum computing, I watched this YouTube video. It was just so vastly different from everything I learned in school. And that's what really got me engaged in the first place. And every time I learned some crazy theory, that's what keeps me going. It keeps me motivated to want to uncover more about the technology. And I think that applies for a lot of people, especially if they're already interested in physics or some sort of mathematics. It really keeps them engaged to just learn something very different from what we learn in school. And my support network was really just found by talking about it. I talked about quantum. I saw who is receptive to this, like who is really actually maybe they want to learn quantum as well. And I found high school students like me all over the world. Um, we have team members in Singapore, India, the United States, Canada. And it's crazy just like how everyone around the world just united by like this love for quantum. Mm -hmm. Do you think middle school would be too young uh, to start? What's your opinion? I, I think it is definitely possible. I So my personal belief is that there is like a barrier to entry. So right now we're starting at like a level of which college students already need to learn some things, but we can definitely like break it down and that they can continue learning as much as they can until the graduate degree is the next step for them. So it's not that they only, that's not where they start, but they can just go and that is their next step. We can bring them to that like platform where now they'd go on to the graduate's degree. All right, thank you so much and good luck. Of course, thank you. Hi, Anisha, it's great. I really like your work for just starting quantum computing for high school students. And uh, I have a PhD degree in theoretical physics in condensed matter, it's like quantum physics from Canada. And I'm working since 2012 uh, in California as a university and college instructor. And, and having experience with teaching at a community college, I, I uh, associate faculty at San Jose City College in California. And I had been having several students and it's interesting uh, in the, nowadays, the students at uh, middle school, even I had a student in uh, fourth grade uh, that was getting my um, CC++ programming from San Jose City College. It's coming with very young age and it's very, very amazing. You can connect with um, middle school. Um, he was in elementary school and high school students and they like to get their degrees in uh, computers. I have so many students in uh, Java, Python, C++, uh, C, C++. And if we can start, I want to talk to San Jose City College about starting um, quantum computing for um, students. And I, th I think you, if you track the 
community colleges, the ages are not specifically older. It's, they are even middle, uh, high school students or even middle school students that come to um, community college. And it's a very um, good place for you to con connect to people. And by having a PhD in um, physics, I suggest you to try to connect to these uh, educational places as well as because you are young and uh, the road is opener for you. Um, try to connect to companies too, like IBM, Google, and um, take advantage of this opportunity and Wow, I'm I'm sorry. Has somehow we bumped um, that lady off the mic who was talking about um, going to some of the major corporations for um, funding, which I think is a great idea. Um, certainly, there's a lot of people um, online that can make recommendations to Anisha and maybe share some contacts with her um, on how she can get funding for her program. Um, so, are there any other questions? Um, that we have for Anisha before we start moving on. Um, Chris Bishop put up um, Anisha's website and a community text website, as well as uh, Anisha's LinkedIn profile. So I always find LinkedIn as a great way to meet with people. And I know I've communicated with Anisha on LinkedIn and she's been great. Um, one more question. Would it help if we spread the word in primary and secondary schools in the Euro UK and European Union? Yeah, of course. I don't there is never too early to just start talking about quantum computing. And even if they're not fully they don't fully understand it yet, there is always something that they can learn. And maybe in the future, that's when they actually start to approach it when they're in high school, maybe college or even their graduate's degree. At least they know what it is. And it's never too early to start talking about it. Uh, how did you find all your members? Was it just word of mouth or what did you do? For our community members or the yeah, team members? Yeah, for community. It was, it was a lot of word of mouth. We posted a lot on the quantum Reddit. We talked to researchers in the field. We have taught and we were pretty much just like tried to spread as much word of mouth as possible. And I guess a lot of people just learned about it from that and there's nothing else that really exists for like that that we're hosting specifically for high school students. So a lot of people found it. Well, Anisha, it's an incredible story, and uh, we're all cheering you on. And uh, I, I want you to feel like this is a community you can come back to and ask for help. Yeah. Um, so I think I think everyone here wants to just tell you how much we support you, and to keep on asking us and telling us what you need, and we'll help you try to find those resources so that you can um, continue in your work because I think it, it is really important, and I think. Um, I don't know how to say this, but glamorizing science or making science more accessible at younger ages, I think is really critical. And so I love what you're doing. I think it's amazing. I appreciate that a lot. And I definitely agree with that. And I know there are so many questions and people reaching out and giving their support in the chat that I unfortunately wasn't able to address. So I'd love if any of you, if you had a question that I wasn't able to get to, could just email me no problem. I love responding. I love hearing people just talk about what we all love and are passionate about. Awesome. So everybody, thank you to Anisha and we need to move on to the next panel. So again, hit that red button in the left hand corner of your screen and Anisha, we're going to stay in touch with you. So thank, thank you everyone. Thank you, Anisha.